Hey sub theories, it was the year 98 of the fourth era when the two moons of Nirn, Mesa and Secunda, vanished from the night sky. The people of Tamriel looked up to the heavens and saw naught but stars. While many in Tamriel panicked, the Thalmor saw only an opportunity to extend the reaches of their influence. This is but one chapter in the rise of the Thalmor and the third Aldmeri Dominion. This is the story of the Void Knights. Despite being such a pivotal event in the history of Tamriel, there are very few records of just what happened, or more importantly, why it happened. The most detailed account we have of the event comes from a concise account of the Great War between the Empire and the Aldmeri Dominion. In the year 98 of the Fourth Era, the two moons, Messer and Secunda, vanished. Within most of the Empire, this was viewed with trepidation and fear and elsewhere, it was far worse. Culturally, the moons are much more influential to the Khajiit. After two years of the Void Knights, the moons returned. The Thalmor announced that they had restored the moons using previously unknown dawn magics, but it is unclear if they truly restored the moons or just took advantage of foreknowledge that they would return. Now there is a lot to talk about here, from Khajiit culture to dawn magics to the missing god Lorcan, but let's break this down. Firstly, while it's unproven, many believe that the Thalmor solved the Void Knights crisis, but why would they want to. The years 171 to 175 of the Fourth Era were a bloody time for the Empire. The Dominion waged the Great War across Tamriel, gutting the Empire's provinces and forcing the signing of the White Gold Concordat. But the Thalmor knew that they couldn't do it alone, and they needed elsewhere for a particular strategic reason. In their rise to power, the Thalmor capitalized on their success during the Oblivion Crisis to seize control of Somerset Isle in the year 22 of the Fourth Era. In the year 29 of the Fourth Era, the government of Valenwood was overthrown by Thalmor collaborators, and a union with Eleanor proclaimed, Eleanor here being the new name for Somerset Isle, and it was by taking credit for bringing back the moons in the year 100 of the Fourth Era that they brought Elsewhere into the Eldmeri Dominion. Strategically, Elsewhere was critical to their war effort. Not only did it bolster their forces, but it gave them a stronghold right on the border of Cyrodiil, with direct access to the Lower Niven River that connects to the Imperial City itself, a vital trading post and control of the resources flowing into the heart of the Empire via Sea. Elsewhere was vital to their first two objectives. A strong force commanded by the Thalmor general Nord Narifin attacked Cyrodiil from the south, marching out of hidden camps in northern Elsewhere. Leowin soon fell to the invaders, while Breville was cut off and besieged. Without Elsewhere, the Thalmor couldn't have launched ambush attacks against Leowin and Breville. Interestingly, we know from Ulfric Stormcloak's dossier that the Thalmor called it the first war against the Empire and not the Great War. The Dominion always intended to wage further war against the Empire, and necessarily, taking the Imperial City, the heart of Tamriel, was crucial to the goal. The Thalmor needed elsewhere if they were to put themselves into the position to wage that future war. Without it, the Emperor would have been able to reinforce a buffer zone between them. By claiming responsibility for solving the Void Knights, one of the greatest crises that elsewhere had ever seen, the Thalmor placed themselves right on the Empire's doorstep. But the Thalmor's intentions and plans may have gone far deeper than simple military strategy, far more insidious, even. There is a reason that the Void Knights are described as far worse for the Khajiit. Culturally, the moons are much more influential to them. But this isn't just a cultural thing. The primary reason that they hold significance to the Khajiit is a thing called the Lunar Lattice, a mysterious and ancient force governed by Massa and Secunda the moons of Nirn. In the words of clan mother Anisi, it's written, And Azura took some forest people, who were torn between man and beast, and in her wisdom made them of many shapes, one for every purpose. And Azura named them Khajiit, and bound them to the lunar lattice. Essentially, this means that Azura tied which form the Khajiit would take to the phases of the moon when they were born. These range from huge Khajiit called the Senche to small house cats called the Carthay Rat. Though we primarily meet humanoid Khajiit throughout the games, according to the Empire, over 20 forms have been documented among the cat men of elsewhere. It was no wonder that the Khajiit panicked when the Void Knights happened. It wasn't just a cultural thing to them, it was life and death. We have no record of just what kind of Khajiit were born during the crisis, or even if there were any. Many believe it was two years of stillborns, the population slowly dwindling. On a side note, they also believed that this was a sign of the barriers between Oblivion and Nirn breaking down, which may or may not have been cause for panic. It's no wonder that after seeing the Thalmor as their saviors, they left for the Dominion, a true power that could protect them. But what if the Thalmor didn't just solve the Void Knights? What if they caused them? 
I love a good conspiracy story as much as the next man, so let's get our proverbial tinfoil hats on. They certainly had a strong motivation, and if they could bring them back using what they called previously unknown dawn magics, then why couldn't they make them vanish? There's an interesting line from Michael Kirkbride, an important figure in the Elder Scrolls lore community. When asked about what the Void Knights were, he described it as a eugenics experiment with the Thalmor likely being the ones responsible. Or at least that's what this theory supposes. As we talked about before, the form and birth of the Khajiit are intimately tied to the moons of Nirn, and the Thalmor may have wanted to manipulate that. It's no secret that the Thalmor have a bit of a thing for elven supremacy and blood purity, and the lineage of the Khajiit is in some way tied to the Aldma the original race of Myrrh that walked Tamriel. Now this is one of those areas of Elder Scrolls lore which is super confusing and highly theoretical and only really makes sense to people arguing about it on the internet. It's complicated and it has a bunch of different accounts that may or may not be true, but we sort of know that there was once this group of beings called the Elnafei in the Dawn Era, when the land held no shape, the trees did not harden into timber and bark, and the elves themselves shifted from form to form. This formlessness was called the Ooze. The Ooze, the Elnafei, the forest people, they're all related in some way, and while it is unclear just who came first, second, and third, the Aldmer, Bosma, and Khajiit eventually manifested from this one group of Elnafei. But the Thalmor believe that the Wood Elves, formed by Yifra, and the Khajiit, formed by Azura, are deviations from Murish perfection. They were taken away from those original Elnafei and made into something different. If this was a eugenics experiment on behalf of the Thalmor, they may have wanted to see if the Khajiit would no longer be born as cat people, but revert to being born in their elven forms that they would have had in the dawn era without the moon, reinforcing this narrative they have of elvish supremacy. It would have been a bit of a shock to elsewhere to be giving birth and expecting a cat and finding like a little high elf, <laughs> but that's just one of the theories. There is one more, one darker theory about the Void Knights. Across a number of the pantheons, the moons are often connected to Lorcan, the god of man and the missing god. In the lunar Lorcan, it is written that the moons are the two halves of Lorcan's flesh divinity. Massa and Secunda therefore are the personifications of the dichotomy that Lorcan legends often rail against, set in the night sky as Lorcan's constant reminder to his mortal issue of their duty. While this isn't a fully substantiated theory, there are other cultures that associate Lorcan with the moons in different ways. The Khajiit believe that Lorcan is the decay of the moons, but not the moon itself. What's true is probably a mix between all of the stories, that Lorcan is related or has something to do with the moons, but it's not quite clear what his role is. But the Thalmor may have grander plans than just Tamrielic domination and elven supremacy over men. While we don't have time to get into the full detail of their theoretical plan in this one video, the elves have long lamented their mortality and fall from divinity in the creation of the Mundus. While men view Lorcan as the hero of early mankind, fighting for them against the oppressive Myrrh, the Thalmor see Lorcan as responsible for their fall, tricking them into giving up their divinity for creation. While Lorcan may be missing, Talos is intimately connected to him in a number of weird lore ways that we don't quite have time to discuss now. In Skyrim, most players will know that it's a big deal that that they wanted to outlaw Talos worship, it's what sparked the Stormcloak Rebellion. But one text sheds some light on why they might want to do that. They wish to erase the upstart Talos from the mythic. His presence fortifies the wheel of the convention and binds our souls to this plane. If the Thalmor wish to escape their mortality and ascend into Aetherius, and while we don't know for sure that they do, there is a good amount of evidence to suggest it, it appears that the God of Man is in their way to doing so, whatever their intentions. Erasing the body of Lorcan from the sky, the one who tricked them into their mortality may have been a step towards this. It all fit into their plan, destroy the body of Lorcan, the God of Man, weaken Talos, and ascend into Aetherius. Clearly though, if that was their intention, it didn't work, and that may be part of the reason that they brought it back, because they thought they could at least use it to bring elsewhere into the Aldmeri Dominion. But who knows, the Void Knights are a fascinating little chapter in the rise of the Thalmor and Tamrielic history, and that's all from me. My question of the day, if you were the ruler of the world for one day, what one law would you pass? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like my work and want to support me in what I'm doing, as well as support our Supreme Leader Mishka, who is the most adorable little kitty ever, uh, then you can do that 
that at Patreon for as little as a couple of dollars a month. That really does mean the, the world and thank you to all of you who are doing that so far. Uh, your support is, is just absolutely incredible and I can't express how thankful I am for that. In the meantime, I'd love for you to come follow me over on Twitter. That's where I tend to respond the most because I can send little short messages. Otherwise, uh, email myself that you've made the address and links in the description below. Uh, stay nerdy, sub furies, and I will see you in the future.